Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, one of our participants that we know um, couldn't get her caption started, and she was here a little early, and so that's what we were talking about before we went ahead and started our meeting. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Ann Thomas, and I'm the president of the HLAA Diablo Valley chapter. And our other board members are present here today, and everyone's doing tasks behind the scenes because you can't run a um, efficient, really smooth Zoom meeting without help and other people moderating features. So I'd like to introduce Zohair Chiba and Zohair, can you say hi so that- Hello, uh, welcome to HLA Diablo Valley chapter. And Zohair admits everybody. I'd like to introduce you to Alan Katsura, who's our right-hand man person for IT things, and Alan does all kinds of tech support, and Alan and I work on other projects together. So, Alan, can you say hi? Good morning, everyone. Jill hi. McFadden, who has on a wonderful sign she made to go with our presentation today, is our secretary, and she usually hand handles all the Q&A. Jill, morning. You here? There you go. And Walt Bateman is our treasurer. So we'd like to welcome all of you today. And since the Walk, of Hear Walk for Hearing is right around the corner and we just launched our team website, we wanted to make sure that everybody really <laughs> knew how to participate in the Walk for Hearing. It can be problematic. Before we get into our presentation, I'd like to go ahead and give directions. Oh, excuse me, I forgot something. So we're going to have three people who've been very active in the Walk for Hearing talk about why the Walk for Hearing is so important to them. And I also wanted to introduce <laughs> them. So Regine Castle. Regine, can you say hi? Hi. So, Regine, in 2006, Regine was the chair for the first Walk for Hearing in California. Uh, Capri Schuler is coming, and I don't know whether she's here yet. I'm here. She is. Okay, Caprice, can you say hi? Hello, I'm Caprice. <clears throat> and Caprice um, lives in almost the Central Valley, and prior to our having um, walks in Northern California again, she was traveling every year to Southern California to participate in the walk, and she has a four-year-old daughter named Avery and Caprice and her family have a team and they walk for Avery and raising awareness about hearing loss. And they'll she'll tell you her story. <laughs> oh my God, I have a typo here on your name, Barbara. So Barbara <laughs> Dagan is our chapter member and Barbara has participated in lots of different walks. Um, originally she was from New York and participated in many of them there. Before we get going, we have some directions on how to use Zoom. We have captions, a full transcript, a chat window, and we'd like to ask that you raise your hand later for questions. So Marilyn, wherever you are, whoever with this, these directions are really for only desktop versions. Um, and if you are on a desktop version and you need to access captions, which of course are 99% of us, you need to click on the CC icon, which is circled in red, and click on subtitles. If you would like to view a transcript in the side, you can glue. You can um, also click on that. You have the option to increase the size of the font for your captions, and I like mine set to the largest. Also, one of the things that happens is we have chat windows. We have other pieces here that you can open up and talk to each other. Now, originally the chat window used to interfere with the captions frequently if people didn't fully open the chat. But this is not that important today, but I want you to know that you can place the chat window anywhere you would like on your screen. So when you click on that chat button, what'll happen is, see this little box here that says chat in number two with the downward arrow? When you click on that downward arrow, you'll be given an option to pop out. And pop out means you can move, it unlocks the chat window so you can move it anywhere you want on the screen. 
So if you would like to change the font size, you can use your keyboard to do that rather than doing the slider for the for the um, chat. And with a, on a Mac, it's command, which is that squiggly um, symbol, plus to increase or command minus to decrease. And on a PC, it's control plus or control minus. Please feel free to chat with anybody. We'd like to ask that when you chat, that at least you identify yourself, maybe say where you're from, because lots of times our presentations are attended by people all over the United States. And so today, most of us know each other, but lots of times there are people who we don't know where they are, or where they're coming from. And it's just nice to see how far <laughs> and wide we're spreading the word. For Q&A, we'd like to ask that you raise your hand. And how you do that is if you look at the menu bar, normally it's at the bottom of your screen in back, black. Next to the CC icon, there's an icon that says reactions. When you click on that, the bottom most option says raise hand. So when you click on that, your hand will raise so that the moderators behind the scenes will know who you are to call on you. And what happens is with that raised hand feature, the order that you raised your hand is the way that the list shows up for us. So it's first come, first serve, and we're easy. We're, it's very easy for us to identify that. Alan, could you raise your hand so that people could see um, what that looks like in your thumbnail? So you know the little pictures, and you may see them in different places on your screen. Well, you should be able to see right now a hand raised in the upper left-hand corner of Alan Katsura's screen, and Barbara did that, and everyone, so as moderators, we get to see that, and it also shows up in the participants window. Something that's been difficult for a lot of people to figure out is that when there is a presentation like today, you can tell um, Zoom how you would like to view the um, people who are also in the meeting. So if you have it set on speaker view, which is up in the upper right hand corner, what happens is the presentation will show up on the left and the, pres the presenter will show up on the right. Well, the default is the presenter is much smaller. If you would like to increase the size of the presenter, so <coughs> to read lips, <coughs> See the middle of this space here between Zohair and our presentation from January. There are three lines that run up and down like this. If you click on those three lines, you can drag that those two screens back and forth to have them be the size you want. I always need a reminder about this. So this is for me as well as everybody else. When I get excited, when I get nervous, I speak faster. When I speak faster, it's harder for other people who are hard of hearing to understand. It's also more difficult for the captioner to caption accurately. So this is a reminder for me as well as everybody else to just think, talk slower, talk slower. If by some chance you have an external microphone, if you have not connected it for this presentation, every other presentation going forward, please use an external microphone. When you do that, it increases the clarity of the audio exponentially. And for some people who have normal hearing, it's not such a big deal. But for those of us who are hard of hearing, it's a very big deal. So I use an external microphone. And I can show you what the difference is. So I have moved my microphone away. And now I brought my microphone back. So you should have been able to really tell a big difference there. So why are we, what are we talking about this morning? We're going to talk about how to use the Walk for Hearing webpage, how to form a team for individuals, alliances, and sponsors. And I feel very grateful that uh, Regine uh, Caprice and Barbara could join us this morning. I know that Regine has another engagement and so she can only be with us for a little while. 
So, Rajin, I'd like to go ahead and put you right in here right now and to just talk about what inspired you to become involved in the first walk, why you have stayed inspired, and what's so great about it. So, it's all you. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. There. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. First of all, I have to say, Anne, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, this is really an honor. I hold you in such high esteem. I just think you walk on water. But um, I also have to agree with you on speaking slowly. I also get excited very easily, as my friends know, and I talk much faster when I get excited. So I put down here, speak slower in front of me, so I will try to keep remembering. And if somebody wants to punch me or something, if I'm talking too fast, I'd appreciate it. Um, I, I think that all of us have a, a story. And I want to begin with my story um, so that you understand why I appreciate HLA and the walk so much. In 2000, I contracted meningitis and went into a coma for 10 days and wasn't supposed to live. And so when I got out of the coma, I couldn't take a step. I couldn't remember anything, not even my grandchildren's names. And of course, because of the antibiotics that saved my life, I had no hearing in this side and very little, very little hearing in this side. So when I started to deal with this, it was so difficult because I couldn't hear anyone talking to me. I, I really admire children because my grandchildren were never told what to do. But you know what they did? They stood in front of me. They held my face and talked to me really like this. And so I don't know why kids get things that we don't as adults, but that was just amazing that they did that. So uh, fast forward, I took lip reading by um, uh, Barbara, 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 what's her last name? Uh, Bishop, Barbara Bishop. And she told me about HLAA. Well, I'm telling you this, I mean, we all say this changed our life when we found HLAA, but it really did change my life because that's where I learned devices. So now I use a pocket talker every second of the day uh, and a microphone. And uh, uh, we showed a lot of devices at the library about what people can use. And let's see, where am I now? Okay, so I love HL. I learned coping skills. I mean, we all know what, what I learned, but I would, my audiologist never told me any of these things. And I'll tell you, 20 years later, I'm still learning when I have a little meeting. I may only learn one thing, but that's a one thing that I can help me with my hearing loss. So Ann Pope asked me to be president, of, I mean, be chairman of the first walk. And I was so nervous, as Mel and Finn can attest to. We were all very nervous because we'd never done anything like, like this before. We never had an example. But we all knew that Walk for Hearing was so important to raise money for national. And this year, Walk for Hearing is so much more important than any other year because of the pandemic. So national doesn't get the funds from the convention. The, the walks are all much less money that they get. And we don't want them to lose money. We want them to continue to be able to do everything for us to help us in our daily life. So I just wrote a letter and I went down through all my emails and I had 179 people that I sent this letter to with a link for them to go right to donating. And I set uh, $500 as my goal. Uh, it started yesterday. I now have $750 in my, my castle team. So what I suggest for all of you, you're probably nervous about writing a letter because I was really nervous, but my husband's a really good writer. So he wrote the letter for me. But whatever letter you write, doesn't matter how, how fabulous it is that you're this, you know, excellent writer. Write that letter and send it to everyone on your email list to join your team. We have to do this this year more than any other year 
because we need to find more money. I went to get sponsors and a lot of sponsors aren't sponsoring this year because they told me they aren't giving this year because they have to take care of their employees. So we're the employees of HLAA and each and every one of us have to do our part. So any questions? Well, okay, but back to you, Anne. Thank you so much for asking me. And I wish I could stay for this wonderful demonstration, but I have to go. Yeah, I know you have to go and enjoy um, your gathering with um, your family members today. And thanks for being with us. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, and actually, Regine was so inspiring now. I think that we should go ahead and hear from all the presenters first because just hearing her, and I can't tell you, I've known her since I first became a member of HLAA, and she is active in the Peninsula chapter, which is Redwood City. Every time I hear her story, I get goosebumps. So Caprice, you want to go ahead and tell your story about um, the walk and how you became involved and Avery? Oh, mute. You have to unmute yourself. Okay, hi, I'm Caprice and I live in Lodi, California. And my daughter Avery, she's actually six now. She just had a birthday <clears throat> and she was born with hearing loss. She's been wearing hearing aids since she was two months old. And so I, the way that I found out about the walk was actually on Facebook. I'm part of a group on Facebook called Parents with Children with Hearing Aids. And somebody posted pictures of a San Diego Walk for Hearing. And I was like, what is that? That looks really cool. So I just went to the Walk for Hearing website on my own and looked at all the different cities in the US and found that they were only in Southern California. And there was one in Long Beach and one in San Diego. And so I was like, why is there two in Southern California and not one in Northern California? And I um, contacted Ronnie, the walk manager that first year and said, can we get one in Northern California? And <clears throat> so I just decided that it was, I thought it was really cool. And I thought it was important to support my daughter. And so we just decided to go to Long Beach. And so we went for two years to the Long Beach Walk for Hearing. And um, every year I would ask Ronnie about Northern California. And then she, finally she emailed me and said, we're gonna do a, a Bay Area Walk for Hearing. And I was so excited. And then of course COVID hit and we didn't get to actually have it. <laughs> but um, so, I just love Walk for Hearing. I love telling people about it. I love um, educating people about hearing loss um, and just supporting my daughter. And another really cool thing about Walk for Hearing is that you get to choose an alliance that 40% of the funds that you raise goes to. And so I, there's a school in Sacramento that is called the Chat School and it stands for Children's Choice for, no, Children's Choice for Hearing and Talking. And it's a school for kids with hearing aids and cochlear implants. And that's the alliance that we've chose to give to the past two years. And um, last year, my team, which is Team Avery, after my daughter, Last year we raised over $6,000 and that school, the chat center got a check for $2,500, which I just think is really cool. It is really cool. And Avery, can you share how, because you've been really amazing and how you have reached out to people you know and everything to get them to participate in your team. And that's something that I think that a lot of people are uncomfortable about. So can you talk about how you first started doing that? And you've been very successful at what you do. Um, yeah, I just send out, um, I mean, I do all mine on technology. Regine was talking about sending out a letter, <laughs> but I um, usually, 
use Facebook the most um, because you can directly link your Facebook page to your fundraiser and people can just click a button on Facebook and donate. So I raise a lot of money from Facebook. And then I've also found that um, personally texting my family and friends and I just text them the link directly and say, you know, we're taking donations with, here's the link if you're interested in donating. And I just send them the link and I feel like sending it personally instead of like a mass email, if you just text them personally, you get a lot better response. And um, this year I've actually done, I did two new things because this is my fourth year doing it. And so I was like, hmm, how can I raise some more money? So um, this year I went to a, a local pizza place in, our, in my city that does fundraisers and we had a pizza night actually this just this week and 25% um, of every order goes to the walk for hearing and so I don't know how much money we've raised yet because I have to pick up the check in about two weeks but I I think there was maybe at least I passed out at least 30 or 40 flyers to people and so I'm hoping I got at least a couple hundred dollars from that and then I have another friend who on Facebook that sells jewelry. She sells this paparazzi $5 jewelry and she's doing a, a live event and <clears throat> on Facebook and all the proceeds are going to go to team Avery. And so those are just two different things that I tried this year and I'll see how much money it raises. But so far this year, I'm already at $3,600. So, um, yeah. Those are the things I do. I'm just really passionate about it. And so I don't, I don't feel bad asking people about it because people know how passionate I am about it. Something that the first time when I met Caprice, which was last year when we all got together um, on the peninsula with uh, Ronnie to talk about how we would approach the first new walk for hearing in the Bay Area was how Caprice was talking about once she's asked people the first time, it kind of got on people's agenda because they knew her that this is, comes up every June. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, it's just, oh, Caprice is going to contact us about this. So they just kind of are already set aside a certain amount of money in their mind to be able to support her in this valuable endeavor. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, because once everybody, I mean, everybody I know knows about Team Avery. We have shirts. Actually, I'll grab my hat right here next to me. No, you're in the picture. Hang oh, on a I minute. am in the picture, too. Yeah, but no, here's our Team Avery. PowerPoint. So we have Team Avery. This is um, Team Avery right here. My, yeah, that's my family. So we have hats and shirts, and all of our family and friends have bought them. I, I do orders every year. Um, so everybody that knows me knows about Team Avery and knows that it's important to me. So yeah, every year people know that it's coming and I don't have to like give a whole explanation every year because they already know about it. So I really just say, here's the link if you want to donate. And most people donate every year. They just know that once a year, this is what I do. <laughs> Thanks so much for being um so excited to come today and I can feel your excitement through the uh, Zoom camera and I really appreciate it. Yes, thank uh, Barbara, you. Barbara, you have, oh, thank go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna say thank you for having me. I, like I said, I love talking about Walk for Hearing, so thank you. We need to capitalize on that some more. <laughs> uh, so Barbara Dagan has uh, participated on all kinds of Walks for Hearing on both coasts. So Barbara, can you go ahead and share some of your experiences and why it's important for you? And unmute yourself. Okay, Perfect. better? <laughs> okay. I'm so delighted that I just heard the two people before me because I feel so very in sync with them. Um, and you will see why in a minute. 
the the topic that we were asked to talk about is why is the walk why or why has the walk been so important to us and the major reason why the walk has become something very important to me is because it is so closely aligned to um, HLAA as a whole and the effect that HLAA has had on my life. Um, I was a native New Yorker. I'm still a native New Yorker. I moved out of New York and didn't return to New York until 1995. I had a, got a job um, at Mount Sinai Hospital uh, in the communication disorders department and a speech language pathologist in that department immediately recognized that I was having problems. So she told me about the Hearing Loss Association of America. That was either a coincidence from heaven or it was a result of HLAA's outreach efforts because she knew about HLAA. She was able to describe it to me and encourage me to go and attend a meeting, which I did, and I joined the New York chapter immediately. Um, I, I, after a year or two, I joined the board of the New York chapter. And one day at a board meeting, a member of the board by the name of Ann Pope, um, who uh, by heavenly coincidence just happened to be chair of the National Board of Directors mentioned a brand new idea. She said that some of the chapters had suggested that we have a fundraising walk. Um, it just so happened by heavenly coincidence that I had just happened to participate in an American Cancer Society's dogs walk for here, a, a dog's walk for cancer. It was the most delightful, the most wonderful walk. It was such fun. And lo and behold, um, they, they made out like bandits. It was a very successful walk. So I talked about that at the New York chapter board meeting. Well, after that, the walk became an annual countrywide chapter and state walk. Um, and each year it was more and more successful. In 2010, I moved to California to Rossmore and joined the Del Valley, the, the, the Diablo Valley, blah, 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 the Diablo Valley chapter. Um, as you can see by my cap and my shirt. I immediately um, took my dog and we went to the walk in San Francisco that was held at um, Chrissy Field um, and had an absolutely marvelous time. I was so pleased to meet everyone and to know that this I was participating in something that was beneficial to the whole organization as well as to me. Now, here's my closing point. These walks have opened up a world of possibilities for me and for us. Not only um, do the, through the funds that have been raised that enable our chapters and national organization to function, but through the building of awareness and here I want to say, you know, we all know the phrase location, location, location. I want to say awareness, awareness, awareness. Because when we tell our friends about the walk, when we ask, for, ask our families for donations, 
we are making them more and more aware and through them, their friends and relatives, they becoming more and more aware that um, hearing loss is something experienced by active vital people determined to participate in life on an equitable basis. And I'm so very proud and happy to be part of it. It has truly changed my life. And I thank you, HLAA. And Barbara, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your story today and for moving to California so we get to have you as part of our chapter. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So I'd like to just kind of go back and just share these pictures that are were from, these pictures were all from the last walk that was held in Northern California in 2010. And it was a very inclusive walk. So we had an ASL interpreter, we had captions, we had, um, I think we might've even had a hearing loop there. So this picture, which is larger, has just always captured for me, the beauty of sign language. Um, and in a bigger picture, this person is like raising his hands to heaven, you know, at our event. This is our chapter member, um, Judy O'Brien with her family as their team. This is Regine Castle, who you heard earlier. And this is Regine and, Regine and Sally in the bottom corner there. Sally has on, Sally Edwards has on the yellow jacket. And last year, she was the Walk for Hearing chair um, for our first walk up here. And I think that year in 2010, I think Sally and uh, Regine shared the chair of that. In 2010 was the first time that they really had an information booth at the Walk for Hearing. And we hosted that information booth because we were the, one of the first people in the country to go visit our chapter, to go visit farmers markets and other entities with a pop-up tent. And so the bottom picture is what our um, uh, booths look like. And all the way over there in the little corner, we the um, walk was at Chrissy Field. And the day was so incredibly beautiful. Um, the, Bay, the Golden Gate Bridge was in the background. You walk by all these old buildings. And uh, there, so in that picture with the two little kids, you can see this building in the background. And it was like they were sitting far forward. I just walked by with my camera. And they had on these, the t-shirts the, were the smallest size that they had for the walk. And I just love them. So that's what happened in 2010. And hopefully the first time we get to walk in person, we'll even have more fun. So last year, I actually was, when the walk became um, scheduled to be virtual, I thought, how are we going to be able to do this? There's no way that this is going to be able to have the same kind of um, feeling, the same anything as the in-person walk. Well, I have to tell you, I was really, really, really wrong. So, um, and for those of you who don't know me really well, I'm really a very positive person. So to have this kind of feeling be like, well, I don't know how that's going to be. That's not a, a, a prominent part of my nature. So, and I was hoping to be proven wrong. So the first walk for hearing that was virtual, I signed up for it immediately. And I have to tell you, it gave me goosebumps in a way that a virtual walk, I mean, that an in-person walk never has. So the major sponsor for the Walk for Hearing, CEO of a major company, you're able to hear him tell you why he thinks it's important to invest money in us. The other companies who are there, they were saying, you are so important. We're willing to give you our, our, our funds to support you because you're important. What you're doing is important. So if anybody has that kind of scoffing part about, well, it's virtual, it's not a big deal. I hope you can overcome that because it is a big deal. Um, last year, I cried and I made a commitment um, that I tried to attend 
every single walk for hearing that I possibly could. There were some days I did two virtual walks. Um, it was just amazing. Okay, so now let's see if we can be ordered in our thinking here. So what's happened with the walk for hearing? So since 2006, there have been 285 walks. We've raised over $16 million. And you know, we live in a world where unfortunately you need money. So I really would like to see national ads on television about hearing loss. I would like to see us be able to have an ad in the Bay Area on TV about hearing loss. Have all of you seen the ad that's running on TV now about the AIDS walk coming up? That's what I want for us. We've partnered with 1,750 alliances, and we've been joined by 750 HLAA chapter and state associations. So that's just something that we can really be proud about. Now, why do we walk? We walk to raise, promote, fund, and advocate. We want to raise public awareness about hearing loss. We want to make the invisible visible. And the way that we do that is because we speak up, walk for hearing. You can see it on your t-shirt. You can see it everywhere. You're walking with thousands of other people. We're promoting hearing health. Protect yourself, protect your hearing. Funds, we're raising funds to raise awareness and educational fund awareness and educational programs. And advocate. We advocate for public policies that support people with hearing loss. And this is so fundamental for us. If sometimes you wonder, HLAA is in Maryland, it's so far away from us, you know, how do we really benefit from that? Well, we absolutely, completely, totally need a voice for hearing loss in Washington. Without HLAA and Lisa Hamlin, who is our policy director, and she's the person who belongs to all of these committees, advocating for our rights, we would be SOL. So every time you're thinking about that, we would not have captions on television without that, without HLA. Even if we complain about the quality of the captions, we still have them. So the Bay Area Walk for Hearing is going to be on Saturday, June 12th. And we want you to join our team as one of the options. Oops, sorry. So how do you go ahead, how do you be involved with the Walk for Hearing? The Walk for Hearing can be, the, the website can be a little difficult to navigate. And so the focus of our discussion today is how to make it easier for people to do that. So when you go to the Walk for Hearing website, which is this address, www.walkforhearing.org, you'll see something that says, Find Our Walk. So when you click on Find Our Walk, it will take you to a page that lists the different walks. And as it turns out, um, on Saturday, June 12th, 2021, HLAA is combining the virtual walks. Last year was the first time that it happened and they held individual virtual walks. And I'm telling you, it was really, really exhausting and overwhelming. So this year, rather than doing that, our walk and the Long Beach walk. So last year, one was held on Saturday and one was held on Sunday. So rather than doing that, they're gonna both be held together and Connecticut and Westchester Rockland will be together. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on register for the Bay Area Walk. And so here's somebody, there we go, thank you. So how do you register for the walk? So there are a couple of ways that you can do that. So you could choose to join the HLAA Diablo Valley team. And when the walk page opens up, you'll find this icon in the upper right-hand corner. So you see that um, 
Right now, that icon that says search for a walker or a team to support, well, if you click on participant, you're looking for a person. So, for example, Regine talked about having a castle team. Caprice has an Avery team. So let's say you knew the person's name who had a team. You could either type their name in there or if you click on the magnifying glass, a full drop down list will open up that lists every single person who is a participant. If you want to find our team, you can click on the team, which right now is purple, click on the magnifying glass to find the list and click on us, or you could put HLA, Diablo Valley chapter in there. And then what comes up is the image that you see right below that. So there are three ways to register. You could join our HLA Diablo Valley team. You could register for your own team, like Caprice and Regine have done. You can also make your own team part of another team. So this year, um, Jill McFadden has very graciously agreed to be our team captain. And I created a sub-team. Alan Katsura has created a sub-team as part of our Diablo Valley team um, because they're people who I would like to invite personally, like Caprice, all the people who know her that she talked about earlier, support her. So these people would be supporting our team because I ask them to because they know me. You could also register for your own team by yourself. When you do that outside of the chapter team, you get to designate who you would like to donate your funds to, your portion of the funding, and you can register as an individual. So you may be wondering why might somebody want to register as an individual, and I think that's, no. Nope. So the reason is that everybody who donates to the Walk for Hearing doesn't get a t-shirt, or as Alan Katsura asked me a question this morning and he said, gets the swag. So in order to get that, you have to donate $100. So if you wanted to donate $100 and you wanted a t-shirt, it's my understanding that if you donate that money as part of our team, you don't get your t-shirt. But if you do it as an individual and you designate your funds to go to HLAA Diablo Valley, then you get a t-shirt. And I can, I can make sure and verify that for you. I emailed Ronnie this morning, but um, she's busy doing some other walk things and I didn't hear back from her. So after you've registered, every person who registers as an individual has their own walk center. And HLA has set this up so that you have tools that are have already been created for you so you don't have to reinvent reinvent the wheel and alan is going to take us through the walk center alan is this where you wanted me to turn the meeting over to you sure i could take it from here okay so alan is going to be presenting on how to use the walk center and do you have access to do you want to can you um move the slides no um, I'm going to give you a remote control. Okay. And let's hope it works because sometimes we've had problems with that. Oh. I wonder if we didn't make you. Oh, you've got a co host. Oh, there you go. So do you have remote control now? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, so what we're I'm gonna go through the PowerPoint briefly and then we'll go directly to a live site and you can see how everything works. Um so once you get inside there, you'll see this section here, and this pretty much walks you through what you have to do. You learn how to use the email setup. They have a template in there that you could use 
or you could uh, create your own template and reuse it for all your emails. And you could have several templates. You could have one for asking, one for a thank you. And they also have pre-made ones, so you don't have to do any of that if you don't want to. And here is some of the images that you could have on your uh, emails. You could preview it here. You could save it as a template and we'll go through all that on the live site. Oops. And we also go through on how to set up your profile. And so now we'll go to the live site here. Okay. So we're going to go to my walk center. Um, Alan, I don't yes. see the share. You don't see the share. Oh, now we're good. We're good okay. now. It's just a while, it took a while to come up. Yeah. They're supposed to have that fixed where it's supposed to say that the share isn't visible yet because evidently they have a problem with the delay on the shares. Okay, so we'll go to my walk center. And that will take you to a page where you'll go to, the, for in our case, the Bay Area and log in takes you to your own personal login page. And from here, I'm gonna log into my mother's site. And here, so you have, she's a member of the Diablo Valley chapter and she's on that team. So this, that's what this information here is for. Uh, so you scroll through, if you're going to be using HLAA logos, there's a branding guide here. There's tips for fundraising. And I think this is just for, um, it's a link to Facebook to post your walk on Facebook. Here's the swag that they have. T-shirt for 100, 350, and you also get a cap. We'll go over how to connect to Facebook. These are your recent activities that you've done. And over here, they kind of walks you through the various steps that you need to go through. Continuing down the page, this is all the information of your contacts and your emails. Here you have your progress and where you could edit your goal. As you go along, you collect different badges and so they'll just display here. And we'll go through creating content for your um, personal page. So the first thing I like to go through is set up the profile, your pro personal profile. So if you go here to profile, there's three sections here. Everything is pretty self-explanatory. You have your personal information. And when you complete it, make sure you update or save it. This is some information about yourself. So if you got a t-shirt, what size do you want the t-shirt? Um, and there's a couple other questions that they ask. And again, make sure you save it.
And here you can make your personal page private or public. And you could change from a team to an individual if you want to. Let's see here. So if you want to connect your walk to Facebook after you can, well, maybe I'm doing this out of turn. Um, let's set up the personal page here first. Okay, so you can set up your own personal page. You can come down here to personal page and edit. There is a default template that has information in here. And that's this first part of it as part of that template. And from there, I changed it. And you could just use what they have there or you can modify it or create your own template. And so I chose to make a message for myself, for my mom. And once you did that, you just want to save it. And so this will be available whenever we want to use it. You could also create a custom URL for the page. And in this case, I just changed it to my mom's name instead of having the long URL sticking out here. And it's just a matter of convenience. Alan, could you just quickly let people know um, what a URL is yeah. and why it could be valuable? Because some people might not know that. So URL is a, basically it's a, web, it's a web page address. It's a universal resource locator. Um, and so when you click on it here, it allows you to just make a prettier URL instead of having um, a bunch of miscellaneous characters in here. You could put something in here that's more meaningful. So like if you look up here in the address bar, this is a URL. It's just the web address. So how you might use that is, let's say you were sending out mass emails to people that you wanted it to show your email address rather than a walk for hearing address. Uh, you might choose to include the link, that URL that Alan just showed you, and then it would take people directly to your page and they wouldn't have to search how I talked about earlier. Okay, back to you, Alan. Sure. And down here, if you want to include a photo, you can just go in here and just select what you want, choose your file. Or you could even actually do a video if you want. So that's all updated. Now you could go into your contacts. And there's different ways you could get your contacts in. You could add them individually, or you can import them from your address books. So you have your contacts list here. Here on the side, it keeps track of everything that you have done or need to do. So for this walk, there's 22 contacts in this list. 21 of them have not been emailed yet. There's one that needs follow-up. There's the donor that hasn't been thanked yet. You got one person that donated, 20, 21 that have not. Alan, I'm going to interrupt one moment right here. Sure. So as you're setting up your personal page here, what you might decide to do, which I'm assuming Alan did here, is 
you make a donation so that you can test out how he made uh, maybe a donation to himself you know he made a donation on his own page so that he could test out um how the page was working and so he wouldn't he's still unthanked because he doesn't need to thank himself so you get to select who to thank and who not to thank back to you okay So what I did, I composed a message. And in this case, I have a template. Set up. Oops. See the downward facing arrow on the side there? So you may be wondering, well, Alan's talking about templates. Well, I'll, I don't see any templates. How do I find them? So that downward facing arrow, when you click on that, all kinds of other options are there for you. You have a template for thank you. You have a template for reminding people it's coming up. They're all, see, see now you have a solicitation. Thank you, other. You can make a difference. You can create additional templates. Back to you. Okay. So these are all the default setting ones that HLAA has created for you. Um, okay, so I can't find my... I thought I had a template laid out here. Anyways, so you could go down here. You could create a heading or select a heading that you want to show. And get track this bar out of the way here. So and then you could... I think it's still there. So when you scroll up a little bit, see the message there? The message is not the default message. See, I to we told you it's a little bit hard to navigate. That's why that's why we're doing. This. So this message right here above those images, I think, Alan, isn't that your customized message on this um, template? You created it for specifically for um, you. It's not. So, um. Anyways, for what I want to do at this point, I just want to show how to uh, create the, finish off the template. So you have layouts here, you can select an image that you want on it. And you could preview it. So you can see what it looks like. And it's not showing the image in place. Um, but you can see how the content is and how it's going to look. And it will link to your personal page down here. It doesn't show it here, but it says here that it will add the link to your page at the bottom of the message. And if you have people selected to send it to, you can send it from here. Um, And you would do that by going into your contacts and selecting the people that you want to send the particular message to. So in this case, it's just, we could go Here and it's the solicitation. A personalized greeting will just put the person's name in the template. So one of the things that when Alan was at that screen before, Alan, can you go back that one screen? 
where you are listing your contacts. See the little boxes? So you can select, if you look at the top in the blue, it says email all. Well, maybe you only want to email a couple of people. So how would you go about doing that? So the way that you do it would be, you would only check the person who you wanted to email. So Alan right now, what you're looking at has checked his own name so that if by some chance right in our demo here that he would not be sending a message to somebody else who he wouldn't want to be doing that to. So anytime you would check that box, you could send a message individually or maybe even a couple of them to those people. Like theoretically, let's say you had three or four chat, three or four family members who you knew weren't very active on their email. And so you wanted to slightly nudge them a little bit. Um, you could choose to send the email to like five people. You could even probably say, oh, I don't know if you checked your email yet, but you know, we're, we're doing it. So I just wanted to point out that box since lots of us tend to not be very tech savvy. Back to you, Alan. Okay. So I'm gonna see, let's grab this template. You selected. So if we wanna preview it, preview it. And from here, I could just go ahead and send it. And so, I've successfully sent the message. If you have a layout that you like, you could also just save it as a template for future use. So you don't have to do this every time you want to send the same message out to somebody. And then over here, you now see that there's another message that's been sent. See here. Where am I? Oh, I don't know what it was. It's over here. Okay, so here, if you want to connect to Facebook. It's just as simple as it generates everything for you. And you have a Facebook page for your for the walk. Here it has my personal message. So information. If I correct, yes. Uh, Tilly's URL links directly to this page. And so um, if anybody had Tilly's URL, rather than going through the other things that are in the front um, of all of those steps, which can be confusing, it would take it directly to Tilly's page. Yeah. So actually, if you just. had that link copied into an email or something and you clicked on it and it would just open up to the personal page here. So here, someone could join now or donate now and donate directly to the team. So you have selected amounts that they'll take and you could, they could fill in if they want this to make it anonymous or put their name in, the billing information, so forth. Or you could join, they could join your team. And then there's the personal information here, badges, how much money has been raised, who their donors are.
But then again, here you could do all, some of your invitations from here, from Facebook. And I think this is what, um, Caprice does a lot. I think she said from Facebook. And this has a lot of the, almost all the information that is generated from this section here. Let's see if there's anything else here. I think that's everything that's on here. So Alan, before you go, mm -hmm. see the, the image that we're looking at here is the one that I used as the introduction for our presentation. And if you look right below that on the left hand side, Right now in blue, it says home. Well, after you have been to this home part once and read this, you're probably not going to go to home again. The two things that you're going to be using, and the, the thing that you're going to use the most is the one that says email. So Alan, could you just click on email next so people can see that that blue home turns to email and it'll take them to the email section where you're just located. See there? So Alan clicked on email, and then it opened up this whole section. And, and this is really the guts and the foundation of um, after you've set up your profile page, how you keep track of things, how you can send out uh, uh, invitations to donate and things like that. Okay, and once you've set up your profile page, which is the next one over, more than likely you're not going to visit that again for the whole time of the walk because you've already input your name and all of that stuff, so you can completely ignore that. So this middle one is the one that you may choose to use a lot. Okay, Alan, do you have anything to add or do you want me to take it back? Um you take it back unless if anybody has any question. I think Debbie has a question. Yeah, uh, this is Debbie uh, Hagner. Um, how much time does it take to prepare this? It looks like, and how much time in advance should you be focusing on the um, your profile? Because I was just going to be in, I think, in October. And probably a good idea to start wait, asking for money now for like for my team in Florida. Um, or you have to do it like one month. Is there a limit or time frame? You know, I have never heard of a time frame. So my understanding is, see, ours are ours have always been in the spring. And so we have to wait until the website gets updated to be able to start doing the, the walk um, portion. So we're always, and I've been just jammed, so we're always a, a little later. Um, there are some reasons to think, definitely to think ahead, even a year ahead about walk sponsorship. So like lots of organizations budget for things the previous year for the following year and they have granting cycles. So I recently reached out to Google because they're a local tech company for us and they would have been happy to have donated to be a sponsor for our walk, but they had already um, designated and used up all their funding for 2020 and their schedule starts in September. So that could be a reason to really start thinking about that. Um, a place of the asking is that depending on how you know the person. So somebody may, it might not make any difference. They're just, you know, they have a lot of money, they're handing out money, so you know that about them. So you have them hand out the money, it just becomes part of the pool. Other people feel that, you know, the closer and a part of that you ask people to the event, it's more exciting and momentum, momentum builds. So, you know, this whole part of this, there's an emotional, compart, uh, the emotional component, 
There's strategic thinking about it if you really wanted to address that. Does that answer your question? Debbie, are you still here? Yes, she says it's good. Okay, so I'm going to take us back to, there yeah. we have a few other slides in our PowerPoint, and I just want to run through them with you. So the first thing everybody needs to do is, once you've registered, is create your profile. And this is what the profile screen looks like. There's another option that we have here, and that is that for raising money and raising awareness, and it's alliances. And any organization that's a 501c3 organization can fundraise with us, and it's fundraise, march, raise awareness, all of the reasons why we walk. And it's really a wonderful uh, component that they can do that. And so this year, I think that we might have 20 alliances that are joining us and they have, they will be their own entity and the funds that they raise go directly to them. So Caprice, um, I know that you know about a couple, a couple of other alliances in and around Sacramento. Am I right? Can you talk a little more about alliances? Do you have anything to add? Um, about that? I just have, um, the chat school is the one that I give to, but the alliance, the way that the alliances work is that 40% of whatever you raise goes to the alliance that you choose. So when you set up your profile, those questions that Alan had up, one of the questions is which nonprofit do you want your, um, to be your alliance? I don't know if it's worded that way, but that's what that question is. And so you choose which alliance you want 40% of your money to go to. And um, so I know for a lot of the chapters, a lot of the chapters, they, am, is that right, Anne? Some of the no, chapters, I'm no? I'm talking about a different piece. I'm talking about an alliance in and of itself can be part of the walk. And so theoretically. Oh, yeah. So like the chat school, so like. The chat school is my alliance, but the chat school can also start their own team and promote the walk, which is what I'm trying to do because last year, the chat school was not involved with the walk at all. They were just listed as an alliance and I raised the money for them. This year, I'm really excited because I just, I get their newsletter every um, month and in their newsletter, they're promoting the walk this year. They had a link to it and they said, um, they had the link to register. And so this year they are promoting the walk. So. Yeah. So if anybody knows an organization that's hearing loss related, they can become part of our walk, just like we're a team, but they're called alliances. And so what the only reason I'm mentioning it here is to put your thinking cap on because we want to get as many people involved as possible because the more attention that we have and the bigger our sphere is, the more clout we have. And we want everybody to provide for us in the best way possible so that we can live whole healthy lives. Okay, so if you wanted to be an alliance, you would contact um, Ronnie. Um, and here she answers uh, walk for hearing at hearingloss.org. So raises awareness about their organization. They get a share in the funding opportunities and it connects them with the heart, the, you know, the full body of the heart of hearing community. So sponsors, theoretically, there can be tons of us who know businesses who donate to organizations. And so they would be a sponsor for the walk. Now, when somebody sponsors the walk, what the portion of the funds that um, are left over from the sponsorship go to the Bay Area walk. They don't go to an individual team. So when I mentioned before talking to Google, so when I talk to Google, I approach them as being a sponsor, even though that doesn't benefit the Diablo Valley chapter specifically, it will benefit all of us because it would support the whole walk. And unfortunately, the timing is off. So 
Some quick FAQs. Can you donate by check? Yes, you can. And um, you can just, you could email any of us. You can send it to hladvhearingloss.org for additional directions. Why would you create your own team? So you have family and friends who would like to support you. See, Caprice, family and friends want to support her. Regine Castle, family and friends want to support her. I'm um, thinking, Alan, he has all kinds of family that wants to support his mother. So all of us have our family, and our family would support us more than necessarily an individual team. So all of us here have extended relationships beyond who we are as individuals. Everybody who knows us knows how difficult life can be for us, all of the adjustments that we have to make, and they love us. They want to help us. They, they, they want to um, show in some way that, that they're behind us so that we can feel their love and their comfort. So why would somebody register as an individual? Now, Alan asked me about this this morning, and the slide was prepared, um, and I have an email out to Ronnie. My understanding is that um, if you have a team and people d donate to your team, and everybody who donates to your team doesn't get a t-shirt. You only get a t-shirt if you're the team captain or you donate as an individual. Now, Caprice, do you I want could, that? Yeah, I could explain that for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a way that you could go to the live website again or? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's really easy if you just look at it. I can just show you real quick how it works. Give me just a moment here. If you want to just go to the website and search, like if you want to just search for Team Avery and pull up my page, I can show you. Let's see here. Isn't this just amazing that we can go from a, a PowerPoint presentation to the internet to seeing everybody? I mean, it, it just excites me no end. Um, actually, go back to um, find a walk. Find a walk and then uh, the there, the yeah. go to team. Yeah, um, yeah, Avery Schuler. Okay, and then click on um, click on Team Avery. Okay, so on the right there, you see our team roster. All those people have signed up to walk, and some people donate their money. If you scroll down a little bit further till you see my daughter's name. Okay, see Avery Schuler there. She has three thousand dollars under her name. So if you see down a little bit further, like Shelly Simus. That's my mom. So my mom donated her money under Avery's name, which means she will not get a t-shirt because she has zero dollars next to her name. But if, so if somebody could donate money under their own name or they could click on Avery's name and donate it under Avery. So most people donate it under Avery. And when you do that, you don't get a t-shirt. But if you scroll up to the top, like my dad, Rick Clyde, my dad donated $500 on his page. And so he's going to get a t-shirt because it's under his name. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, it makes sense to me, but it's hard. I mean, it it's is so, a little hard to understand. So your but. dad created an end, created a team and his portion is designated to team Avery. Well, he didn't create a team. He just signed up as a walker on our team. Uh -huh. but, when, but when you sign up as a walker, every walker gets their own um, walk page. So like that walk center that Alan was showing you, everybody has their own walk center and their own. So if you click on my dad's name, it'll take you to his 
Paige, but it's still part of Team Avery. But instead of sending out the link to Avery's page, he sends out the link to his page to his family and friends. And he's still raising the money for Team Avery, but he's raising it under his name. And so he's he will get a t-shirt because he's doing it that way. So Caprice, would another way to think about this? So you used your mother as an example. So your mother made a straight donation to Avery's team, but didn't choose to do fun additional fundraising for Team Avery. And yes. so that's why she didn't that's why she did not fund through her own page. Yes. Okay. So let's go through that again. Okay, so Caprice said and Caprice, if I get something wrong, interrupt me. Okay. <laughs> Caprice said that every single person who makes a donation gets their own walk page. If you choose to make your donation from that page to the team that you're signed up for, then um, it just goes into the full amount, which is the three that we're looking at here, $3,018. So turns out Caprice's father wanted to do more fundraising than just his own donation. So he chose to donate, he chose to raise funds through his personal page. And when he did that, he gets the t-shirt for the amount of money that he raises as anything over a hundred dollars. Is that Yeah, accurate? that's correct. And he also has his own fundraiser, a uh, Facebook fundraiser. So I have a Facebook fundraiser and then he has a Facebook fundraiser. And so whenever you create your own Facebook fundraiser, it's going to go under your name. And so you would get the credit for that. Okay. But all of this is still registered under um, Team Avery. Team Avery. So yeah. Alan, can you go and show the Diablo Valley team? So I think in the Diablo Valley team right now, um, it's the team, all of us. Then there's Jill and you and me that have our phase are planning to raise funds on our own. What do we have when we do that? Oh, I think you clicked on, yeah, click on that. There you go. Okay. So as Jill and I choose to raise and choose, and I know that we're committed to do this as, as Alan, Jill, and I are raising funds within our team, people will um, be contributing to us, but it will add up to the total for Diablo Valley eventually, because our, po our portion is being designated going to Diablo Valley. Is that right, Caprice? Yeah, you can see Anne has raised 100, Jill has raised 50, and I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, how Tilly. 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 Okay. Tilly has raised 40. And then up at the top, the captain has raised 50. And then it, that totals right below. It shows you that totals $240 as a whole team. But those individuals have raised that much money. And so Anne is going to get a t-shirt because she's raised 100. Jill, if she raises 50 more, will get a t-shirt and so on. Does anybody have any questions about this? So I want everybody to know that Alan and I are prepared to help you walk through this personally, individually. We just wanted to give it as an overview to hopefully motivate everybody and have everybody get excited. So Alan, you want to let take, send it back to me? Sure. Oh, let me share my screen. We have a couple of things here. Okay, so hopefully that answered that $100 piece about your t-shirt and the swag, because this year it's a t-shirt and a hat, right? Last year it was a t-shirt and a beach towel. 
So as part of the walk this year and so part of some other pieces, HLA is also promoting health. So we all want to hear now and be well together, right? So we want to learn how to live well with hearing loss. We want to stay active, engaged, and we need to make hearing health a priority, which means not letting your husband mow the lawn without ear, without ear protection, not using a power tool, making sure that everything that you're doing in your life, that you're conscious of the fact that continued noise definitely impacts your hearing. So, are you ready? Are you set? Are you ready to go and get your walking shoes on, even though um, we will do it virtually? And something that we didn't mention, and Caprice already has her set up. So, everybody last year was encouraged to, okay, so we're engaging visual, visually, right? Virtually. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't do our own personal walk. It could be five people. If we're lucky, you know, things are getting a little better here in Northern California. We might even be able to have a handful of people. Put on your Walk for Hearing t-shirt. Do something and just walk around in a public place so that you're having your own mini walk. It could be a park. So this is the big deal. I, I think the website is kind of complicated. So I don't expect ever, anybody who walk, went through our presentation with us today to have gotten everything. Does anybody have any immediate questions? Nobody has a question? That's impossible. Come on. Jill. I do. I have a comment. I love the idea of walking together somewhere. And um, I have a few people, younger generation, that I would like to do a Facebook page. I never in my wildest dreams would even think of tackling that. But I think it would be a good idea because the younger generations look at Facebook all the time. Um, so I may be calling on you or Alan if I can't figure it out. It looks fairly simple, but thank you. This presentation has been fabulous and I appreciate it. I'm totally more enthused than I was before. Thank you. Jill, can you tell your story about the first walk you did? It wasn't for the walk for hearing, but, um, Jill sometimes says that she's kind of shy. Am I? Can I say that? That you kind of feel that way about yourself? Except when I'm not, right? <laughs> <laughs> you mean that we'll walk in uh, Hawaii? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I was 59 years old, sitting at a desk in Arinda, working and um, I was spreading out more and more and more. And I just thought, I can't, I'm only 59. I don't want to keep adding five pounds every year. And um, I saw an, a um, information sheet about, you know, walk for leukemia and lymphoma and, and go to Hawaii and do it. I thought, what a great idea, because my daughter had just imagined taking my grandchildren and moved to Hawaii. Well, that was unacceptable. So um, I joined this team. It was a walk team. And for three months, I trained and did a marathon on Maui. It was fabulous. And I, I stayed an extra week to be with my grandchildren. I was able to see them and I had trouble hearing them. That was the first time I really noticed that my hearing was going down and it was frustrating. So anyway, that was my first time. 
And I raised over three years of doing marathons, I've raised $15,000 and it was a very, very exciting experience. Every, all of it, getting physically fit, hearing from people who had relatives who had leukemia, just, it was so rich, the experience and heartwarming. Um, and seeing my grandchildren every year for three years because I joined the walk team and it was fun. But I, I have to admit though, I did go back down to doing a, a half marathon because marathons, <laughs> that's a long time. It took me seven hours and 54 minutes to walk a marathon. But anyway, this, this team is as exciting to me as that in, in another way. So I remember when I heard this story the first time, I remember you talking about the, the, the difficulty at first in thinking about fundraising in and of itself and then how you moved into that and what happened. Could you tell a little, talk a little about that? Oh, the fundraising part. Yeah. I was so excited that I was doing this that I I used graphics, typed up my whole thing and found pictures that I wanted to use. And I was in stickers. And at that time, we didn't have a color printer. And I just, I, you know, went to Kinko's and copied off this thing that I put together. And throughout the time, I sent different follow-up letters just to give them my progress because we did half marathons. We, you know, I met people who had leukemia and walked with them. And so I had lots of different pictures and information to put in these follow-up letters. And it was just astounding who, you know, gave me money. My ex-husband gave me four hundred dollars. <laughs> so that was it. Was great. Is that is that? I don't remember what I told you, Anne. Well, I re I remember some of the feeling about the difficulty at first of thinking about asking for money, but then once you start doing it, how all of a sudden it sort of takes on a life of its own that's sort of beyond you. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. And I love the process of sending out, I personally wrote a thank you note to everybody. And I loved it. It was very time consuming, but I had the time. I mean, I was working full time, but still in the evening every day, I would, you know, write five thank you notes or something like that. It was just, and it was all, um, I didn't, I was not computer savvy at all at that time. So it was all handwritten and, but I love that. I love connecting with people that way. So. And you can still do that. I mean, anybody's free to do that. Minna, I see your hands up. But did you leave? Hi. Hi. Okay. I wanted to ask a question that has nothing to do with what you guys are talking about. A long time ago in the chat, I asked Bob if he would like my oops, my ugh, my muffin thing. We're moving out of the house, and does Bob want mine? So should I save it for Bob, or should I sell it? So this question is for Bob. Yeah. So Bob, I'm assuming you mean Bob's Astro. And Minna, is that a muffin warmer? Yeah, oh, yes. I see it. Bob Zastro, are you still here? So would you like to have another muffin warmer? He has to unmute himself. And uh, answer. Unmute. OK. OK. Uh, yes? I haven't, made, I haven't made muffins in uh, quite a while. I still remember how to do it. So, uh, well, we certainly got to get together. 
When I don't we want to make muffins. I have to eat them all myself. Okay, I missed what you, the last part of what you said, Bob, because I was talking at the same time. I remember your muffins when we had our in-person and I saw your basket and I, the first day and I said, oh, we have the same one at home. So because we're, we're selling our house and we're having an estate sale, I thought of you when I saw this. So I think I heard you say that, yes, you would like to have it. Bob, is the answer okay. yes? I'm not sure about the question. The question is, would you like another muffin warmer? Another muffin warmer? No, the one I've, well, the one I've got is about 25 or 30 years old at least. Yeah, so Minna, still has, Minna has one she's willing to give you. Would you like it? No, I don't, I don't really need it. Okay, then I will sell it. In the estate sale, I will sell it then. But what I if our chapter grows? <laughs> Include a copy of the recipe. It should be on the website. What if we have 100 people coming to our meetings? Wouldn't that be nice? We would need two baskets. So I can hold on to it. I will hold on to it. And when we have our next in-person meeting, I will bring it to that meeting and we can figure it out then. How about that? And this must be at least 25 or 30 years old too, at least. We've been in this house since 1972, 49 years. So yes. I'm, I'm oh. sure. Okay, that was my question. You Go need ahead. to bring it filled with muffins. <laughs> oh. Okay, all right, I'll find a muffin recipe. Maybe it'll be for my Charlie Brown recipe cookbook. Or my Snoopy recipe cookbook. But I'll, sure, it's a deal, I'll do it, no problem. Right. What kind of, I need to know what kind of muffin Bob made. I don't remember, were they bran muffins? Oatmeal raisin. Oatmeal raisin, okay, I'll make the same thing. But no, I better not, his will be wonderful and mine will be first time ever. I'll find some muffins. I'll figure it out. Okay, it's a deal. Thank you for giving me the time to ask this question. Thanks. Something I'd like to remind everybody of. I had a conversation with someone this past week that I've known for a really long time. And they didn't really understand who they have hearing loss. And they didn't really understand that hearing loss is a disability, just like if you were in a wheelchair. We are covered under the ADA. You need to ask for communication access. I was talking, then they were talking about how every time they visited their doctor, their husband had to come with them because they couldn't understand. And I said, well, are you asking for communication access? And they didn't know what I was talking about. So I want to remind everybody, if we're not asking for it, they think nobody needs it. And if you have a problem getting it, the place where you go to is patient services. So if you ask your doctor um, for an accommodation and he doesn't quite know what that is, you go to patient services. And today, basically with face masks, most of us need captions. So there are multiple ways they can do that. The easiest probably is um, captions the doctor would use his phone or a tablet and have um, Ava on them. And you could have it on your phone and you could maintain social distancing to be able to see what they have to say. So you might be, so I'm telling you guys, it's time to step up. Okay. So where, you know, and this is 31 years for the ADA, and we don't really have much in our county. And whatever we do have, it's only because I keep put, asking for it. Okay, so where do you think we should have access? It's 
everywhere. If you participate in city council meetings, all the ones that are online, your senator, your house of representatives, all of the parks and recreation uh, classes, your pharmacy, health care, your bank, our bank in um, who we bank with, this is Mechanics Bank, and I use the Walnut Creek branch and the Danville branch, and I advocated for a hearing loop there, and they have a portable hearing loop there because I asked. Now, they're not so well trained on it, and because I know how to, every time I go there, I have to ask for it, and usually I have to show them a little bit about how to use it, but it is there. Our buses. In the last year, we've received a request from Contra Costa County for disability access for our transportation system. So I've been forwarding all of these surveys and things that they've been sending to us to all of you. If you guys do not speak up and say you would like to be able to understand the bus driver, you would like to be able to use transportation in our county, and it's not only there, but in we have in uh, La Mirinda, there's the Spirit Van, which is run by um, a nonprofit group there, which is available for people over 65. Have and I don't use, I haven't used the Spirit Van, but it doesn't take much to not be able to drive anymore. So all you need to do is have a little, a few problems with your vision, and we all have to depend on on other transportation. Well, then you need to be able to understand them. But if you don't ask for that, they're not gonna provide it. And when you ask for it, you need to document that you asked for it. So what you're doing is you're, you're creating a paper trail. So the ADA and requirements state that you need to ask for your accommodation and you need to be refused, and you need to have documentation that that happened. So if you ask for an accommodation, and they don't give it to you, then and they say, oh, I don't know how to do that, I don't know what it is, then you provide them with information that it's mandated under the ADA, and you feed back to them, and they say, no, you have documented what happened here. If we did that on our county as a whole, we would have a much more um, accessible county for us. And we need it and we deserve it. So I'm hoping to light a fire under everyone's rear end. <laughs> and sometimes it takes talking to your doctor. Sometimes your doctor can go to bat for you. So all of you know that I had a cochlear implant in um, December and my surgeon went to bat for me at the hospital to ensure that um, the day of my surgery, I had effective communication. And it was via Ava on my, my, on my app and their apps. But without that, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been able to understand one word. And then this thing that some of us are thinking about, well, okay, well, we understand when they're in this certain location, if everything's fine, but all it takes is a little bit of a movement off center and we don't understand anything. You go to a hospital setting and you have to take out your hearing devices and then most of us are deaf. So I see Jill, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, I think Mina had hers up first. I don't know if she's there. So, I'm here. Mina's yeah. here, and I have a question. Shall I ask it now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my question was, Anne, you said that you have sent us emails um, asking us to raise our voices that we need these services. I how will I find those emails? Should I search under H L A A D V to find these emails that you have sent to us? No, you're, you, I know that you're signed up to our, and we use an email marketing tool 
to distribute information to our chapter members. The tool that we used is called MailChimp. So you have received a MailChimp that I know I personally created about that. So the only way that you, off the top, and the time frame right now is, I think for the latest one is over. Um, they were doing a survey in Contra Costa County wanting all of our input about that. Um, and I don't have any way of knowing uh, for sure who responded and who didn't respond. But at this time, I don't know how you would easily search for a specific topic. You might try to search your email and see if it would pick it out of the body of the message. Okay, because I do not remember, but I've been busy trying to pack for about a month. I do not remember any email asking us to uh, give our opinion for the Contra Costa County Public Transportation Survey. Well, it was sent out, so you missed it. Okay, so uh, when we get when we get one of these kind of emails, we should answer right away because they they are time sensitive. Yes. Okay. And within the email, and you guys, I'm not perfect, you know. Like you know, I screwed up about the registration for our meeting today. So you know, we're doing our best. I'm trying. All of us are trying. So it's an oops, and you. Fix what you can fix and what you can't fix, you move on. So um, I try to put a link button to where the survey is so you can go ahead and take the survey. And I try to make them big so you can see it. So I would try to identify it with a name survey. Okay. And if, and if people have other ideas to help with the messages you're getting, please let us know. Jill. Hey. The mind can endure only as, I mean, the mind can absorb only as much as the end can endure. <laughs> it's almost noon. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, well, we have, I think, a two more slides. So Jill, Jill is saying she wants us to end our meeting. <laughs> so I'd like to remind everybody we're a member organization. You can renew your membership online on our website. Just click membership. And we'd like to thank our wonderful captioner, Corey Dosty. Um, every single time we have our meeting without you, it would never, ever, ever be the same. Um, if you know of somebody who's looking for a good captioner, Corey can be contacted at this address. And here's the rest of our information for anybody who needs to contact us. And we'd like to thank you for coming today. And I need, we need to hear suggestions about other things that you would like to hear about. So we have to set up presentations. We need help and we need ideas. So please send your comments to us and we'll see you next time. Oh, I have one thing to tell everybody. I'm so excited. Some people are here now that weren't here before. I'm getting my second implant on the 25th. Um, and yeah, so Min, I knew you didn't know that. So my first one, I was just kind of blasé about happening. But this one, I'm really excited. Yeah. Okay, so bye, everybody.